and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Felt Tube. I'm getting ready to dive into my first ever Bucilla stocking kit. I'm very excited about it. This one's called Gingerbread Christmas and uh, I'm going to start with an unboxing and then I'm just going to probably just show you my progress as I go along so it's not really going to be a tutorial. It's going to be more of a watch me make this stocking kind of video and it's really just solely to provide inspiration for you and enjoyment. All right, thanks for watching. My name is Christine and let's get started. Alright, I just wanted to show you where I'm at after two days of stitching. So, as you can see, I cut the stocking out. And uh, the first thing I needed to do was embroider and applique the window. Oh no, first step, I had to do an outline stitch for the background, the wall there. Uh, it called for an outline stitch uh, here for those squigglies, and then the straight line was a back stitch. Then I needed to applique or embroider and then applique the window and then the snow and then the border or the frame around the window. So I did that and then next up it wanted me to assemble the spoon that's going to be hanging right up here. Uh, I didn't do that yet um, because it doesn't necessarily need to be done at this point. I mean you can kind of see right here it's just something that you can even add at the end and I kind of worried that it was going to get in my way working on the rest of it so I'm going to put the spoon see I'm already I'm already going rogue with the instructions but I don't know I just didn't want to risk that getting damaged while I work on the rest of the stocking so I'm going to add that toward the end I, I might go ahead and assemble the spoon and you know get it all sequined and stuffed and ready to hang but not put it on until the end so then the next step was to uh add the shirt. So I did an embroidery line right there and I do have some sequins to add but I sometimes I like to add my sequins after I get this stitched on uh, because I just go right through to the back because that back's going to have a lining on it anyway. So so far so good. I'm excited about this. It's really fun. I just want to work on it all day and all night but I can't because you know, life and responsibilities and things like that. So uh, I just hope my motivation continues throughout the whole thing because I have three more to do after this. So, all right, that's just a quick check-in and I'll uh, check in in, I can't guarantee I'll check in real often, but I'm definitely going to try to check in as I go along as I get pieces and parts done. So I'll see you soon. All right, I just wanted to show you my progress after a couple of days. So I had this crazy idea at about 
2 a.m. this morning uh, when I should have been going to bed. I decided I was going to do Santa's face. So I did the satin stitching and uh, the outline stitching of the nose and then added a little blush to the cheeks. Uh, I did decide to go ahead and um, add the spoon. I just tacked it really well and I figured it probably wasn't going to get in the way too much and I, I thought I want to just do everything in order like I'm supposed to and um, I thought that I would just on camera here show you how I'm going to stuff his face. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. I find that the best tool so far for me to use is this little wooden cuticle pusher uh, with the slanted edge. I feel like that is my favorite tool for adding the stuffing. This is just uh, the polyfill that I get at Walmart. Um, it shows a picture of a doll on the front and so far until I find something better that's what I've been using. Now I don't want to stuff the face too much. So I think just a little bit of padding right there and then I like to just take the tool kind of make sure it goes to the edges. Like that. And then I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to do this off camera but I'm going to go ahead and finish stitching the bottom right there. And then after that's done, I'm going to applique and add the hat. And then I've got to do some satin stitching of the mouth right there. But then I'm going to add the beard. Then I've got the two mustache pieces front and back. That's going to go there. So most of his face is going to get covered up because then he's got his eyebrow, one eyebrow there, and I think that one, 15 goes there, 13 goes there. So next time you see me, so it's Saturday morning, um, what is the date today? The 19th, it's November 19th, and I have a little bit of time to work on this today, so I'm hoping to get all of that done and... Uh, show you what it all looks like in the next clip. Good morning. I want to show you I had a super productive Saturday yesterday. Okay, rewind. I had a super productive crafting Saturday. Uh, I was very unproductive in uh, the things I should have been doing, like cleaning the house and finishing my Thanksgiving shopping, because Thanksgiving is just a few days away. But, uh, yeah. I just kicked that can down the road and have to deal with that today. <laughs> but look at though. Isn't he cute? I just love how his face all came together. Um, pretty pretty uh, easy. I didn't really come across too many problems. Uh, let's zoom in on the satin stitching of the mouth. My satin stitching is getting a little bit better. Um, I still don't really enjoy doing it, but uh, I think the more I do it, the better I'll get. Well, I don't think there was anything more to say about that. Um, you can kind of see about how I, the amount of stuffing I put in. If you can, I, I stuffed the hat pretty good because, you know, I think that those hats kind of need to be stuffed, um, you know, because that's how those chef's hats kind of look, you know, puffy like that. Um, tried to keep the beard not overly stuffed, but uh, yeah, it's it's always a bit tricky. I'm always kind of playing with it. I feel like I understuffed this part of him, but I'm not too concerned because the what I have next, let me adjust my camera here. Okay, because you can see that it's, it's kind of, I, I left it slightly understuffed because things are, that are stuffed are going to go on top of it. Um, so what I have to work on next, the next pieces that I cut out are his uh, cute little hand and the cuff and the sleeve. So that's going to be assembled pretty much like this. And then that's going to go there and it's going to be stuffed. So, you know, it's going to be on top of that, you know, more stuffed. And then he's going to hold 
this little frosting, the little frosting bag, I think is going to go somewhere like that. Yeah, you know, and that's going to be stuffed as well. Um, so, I, you know, I always figure when all is said and done, you know, if I have to. So this is what the back of mine looks like. And I can always cut a slit and add more stuffing to the back of this because I'm going to put a lining on this when I'm done to cover up all of the stitching. But that's kind of what the back side of mine looks like. Um, because uh, a lot of the stitching that I did, I just went through all the layers. Like when I put his beard on, I think you're only supposed to grab just the layer of felt that's under it, but I don't know. I kind of like the dimension it gives when you go through all the layers, but I didn't go through all the layers right here on top of his sweat, on top of his uh, coat. I just grabbed the red that was underneath it. So uh, just playing around with techniques to see what I like. Uh, what else is there to say about that? Oh yes, and also another part that I'm going to be putting on here soon is the bottom part of the stocking, which is going to go there. And then, yeah, so on top of that is the gingerbread house is going to go on there. So this is going to have a lot of stuff on top of it. So I think it was probably wise to keep it slightly understuffed. So yeah, the top half of this stocking has gone uh, fairly quick. Uh, I think that the bottom half is going to go a little bit slower. Let me grab the preview again, and let's take a look. So yeah, the bottom half of the stocking has definitely, you know, we have all of this uh, embroidery on the house, which I'm so excited to get into that. That's going to be fun. So yes, if I'm productive today, you know, I'm going to get all my chores done. I'm going to get all my chores done first, and then I'm going to work on the arms and the frosting bag, and I hope to get at least that done today. But if you notice, I was noticing this the other, the other day. If you look at his jacket right here that shows a few sequins, um, kind of like going down the middle of his uh, jacket right there. Now, there's nowhere in the instructions or there's no um, dots to show that any sequins are supposed to go here. So I didn't do those sequins, but I think when, after I get everything put where it's gonna go, if there's anything showing here, I might add a few sequins right there just to kind of make it look more like the preview because I do feel like his jacket needs a little something right there other than just that black line. So, all right, I think that's it. Um, that's all I have to show you today. Uh, I will check back in when I have made more progress. All right, see you soon. Good morning. It is Thursday, November 24th. It is Thanksgiving Day here in the United States, and I thought I would steal away a quick moment while my pie is in the oven and before the day gets uh, underway to give you an update on where I've, what I've gotten done in the last couple of days this week. Uh, as you can see here, I have got an arm attached with a little cute little frosting bag right there. And uh, then it said next to start doing the embroidery on the gingerbread house, but I wasn't ready to do that yet, so instead I went down here to the bottom of the stocking and I did all of the stuff underneath the gingerbread house. So we've got the, um, the icing along the bottom edges there, all the little candies. And let me actually put you on a tripod before I do that. So we've got a close-up of the cookies. Um, I, t I just sort of attached them in a few spots so they're kind of hanging loose underneath there if you can see. Look like you can just reach out and grab one and take a bite out of them. Uh, what else? Oh, I thought this was adorable. These little beads, the clear beads that you put on top of the gumdrops to make it look like sugar. Let me get you in the middle here more. To make it look like sugar so they were there and then also there was some on the red right there as well. I just did a few stitches uh, 
on each of the little candies I did like five or six stitches around the edge just to kind of tack them down and not too much to say about that um, yeah the arm I just attached it just right up at the top just kind of up in the shoulder area there and um, so all I have next do to do next is start embroidering the gingerbread house. I cut out the pieces for it so I think next what I'm going to be doing is embroidering the front part of the house here and uh, then attaching it to the back like so. And then I'm going to be adding all of the adorable frosting roof and and eventually it's going to go right in front there. Look at the preview again so you can see how much fun stuff I have yet to do. So I still have a lot of pieces to cut out because each of these little green pieces and these little blue pieces on the candy cane, all these little strips and stripes, those all need to be cut out, all these little circles, and then more of the gumdrops on top with all their little frosting tips so there's still quite a bit of work to be done on this but I'm hoping maybe uh, later this afternoon when I'm in a food coma I might work on this a little bit. Yeah we're just having a relaxing day just uh, my family just my husband and I and our two boys um, we're just going to uh, yeah just the four of us although the amount of food we're making you think we were feeding an army so there's definitely going to be a uh, some eating being done. Okay, uh, that's it. I'll give you an update as soon as I get a little bit more done and I'll check in and I'll see you soon. Good morning, it's December 3rd and I have some progress to show you on my stocking. I think we spoke right before Thanksgiving, is that what it was? And I had a rough plan to get my stocking done over the Thanksgiving weekend I think was my plan and that didn't happen. I actually did not do a whole lot that weekend. I seem to have slowed down to a snail's pace all of a sudden on this but without further ado I did get the gingerbread house done. Let's get the coffee out of the way again. Did I say the date that it's December 3rd? So let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, I have a few things to talk about actually today. Uh, one of the things so I ran into sort of a frustrating snag and I think that ever since that happened I I that's I, I kind of lost my mojo a little bit on this just a little but uh, let me talk about it and let me grab my little pointing stick so I can show you uh, what I'm talking about okay you might I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera but uh, when I started to do the frosting here, which is the, uh, what is it, the outline stitch. Um, if you look right here, the print that they want you to print over is black. And I noticed right away that as I started doing my outline stitch, because you have to cover the black lines, the uh, dye from the print line on there, uh, that the white floss was picking it up. And so as I was working on this, it, it started, the white started to get grayer and grayer as it went around. And at first I'm like, nah, you're not going to really be able to notice that maybe. But as I kept looking at it, it was very frustrating, especially with the lazy daisy stitches. Let me zoom in here a little bit. I don't know. I don't know with this lighting, if you can tell, you seem to really be able to see it right here. But do you see how it just kept making my white floss look real gray? So I was just discouraged by that because I, you can't really just redo it because then what I did is I went back with uh, another um, two strands of floss and I kind of did like a whip stitch over top of it. But every time I was stitching, it had to keep kind of rubbing against that black print line and it was picking up the dye and it just, no way around it, it just kept making my white floss look kind of gray. So I've decided that it just is 
going to be that, you're going to have to just be that way because there is no fix around it that I can see. I considered maybe trying to wash it, but I think that might just make a, a more of a mess of something. If that black dye spreads out, you know, then it might just look worse. So, you know, it's kind of like one of those things you just have to accept for what it is and just move on. Kind of like when I did paint by numbers and I got really frustrated because underneath the light colors, even when you're done and you have to, you have to put several coats on, you can always kind of slightly see the number underneath it. And it really bothered me at first until I just said, you know, that's just how it is. <laughs> and once I accept it, I move on. But I'm not going to lie, it still does bother me a bit when I look at this, especially when you see how white the roof is, you know, the white felt, and then it just kind of makes this look grayer. But I don't know, I'm trying to move, I'm trying to move past it. Um, but other than that, it's absolutely adorable. I did kind of a wonky, <laughs> my, I might redo this one. This gumdrop is kind of sticking off to the side over there a little bit, which, I mean, you know, maybe it kind of adds to the charm of it. <laughs> that they're some of them are kind of crooked okay I need to just I'm not really a perfectionist but you know there are sometimes things like that that bother me a little bit uh but let's move on it's adorable though isn't it so I did do a couple of my own changes these are supposed to be French knots but I ended up uh doing these little pearl beads because I had those left over from another kit I think my uh well, the kit that I had that had the starfish, the sea creatures in it, I, the name is escaping me at the moment, but I did have some of those pearls left, and I decided to put those there instead of French knots. And what else changes did I make? Yeah, a couple of them there. Um, I don't know if there was any other changes that I made, other than when I attached these candies um, afterwards, I... I ended up kind of going around and doing a little bit stitch, a little bit of um, tacking stitches through all the layers. You, you can see here how I kind of just went through all the layers there because I kind of like how it looks like the gingerbread is kind of like risen up around there and it gave it a little bit uh, more dimension. So I, I like the way that looked. I did the same thing kind of going around here too. So, and then these candies. So they're kind of like, look like they're embedded in the gingerbread a little bit. Okay, so um, that is where that is. And the I, I literally, all I have left to do is attach, there's going to be, that candy cane goes there. But I'm waiting because I don't know exactly um, where, I'm going to, I think I'm going to wait until I attach the gingerbread house to the stocking. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach the little candy canes right there. But uh, other than that, so I'm going to add this to the stocking, then add these, and then I started a little bit of the name tag here. So they called for you to cut a little piece of the poster board that comes with the kit, and I did that. And then I need to embroider the name on here, which I haven't done that before, but uh, it looks like that'll be pretty simple to do, and it seems like the way you do it is by using tissue paper. Uh, you kind of um, trace the letters that come with the kit. Hold on, let me go grab it. These are the letters that come with the kit, and I don't know, I kind of almost feel like they maybe need to be enlarged. Yeah, I mean, I think those letters are going to end up being a little small, so no big deal. I have a, a copier, so I'll just play around with the size of that and do the name. And, uh, then, so this is the hang tag that's going to hang it. So I have a few kind of tedious finishing up things to do. Um, attach this. Let's get the stocking here. And I'll kind of show you how that's going to look when it's done. So I'm going to attach that. Uh, it says that it needs to go in front of his arm, and I'm kind of thinking I stuffed his arm a little bit too much. I don't know, what do you think, guys? You think he's a little too puffy in the arm? I might have to remove some stuffing. We'll see, we'll see how it looks. But that's, so that's gonna go there. And then yes, these are gonna go on here like that. And like that. And then the hang tag is gonna go up here in the corner. Um, so what I need to do is, I need to go to the, the 
fabric store because I want to get a lining. Sort of, um, I guess they say a fat quarter is all you need, but today I'm going to go ahead and add the backing because, yes, I definitely need to do a lining because I, I just, you know, made a mess of my backside here because I knew it was going to be covered. And, yeah, I don't really want the inside of my stocking to, you know, the, to anybody to snag on anything when they're reaching their hands in to get candy out. So I'm going to definitely do a lining on there. And uh, it seems like that should be pretty simple to do. And that's done at the, the last step. After you get it all assembled, then you uh, stick the lining in there. And, yeah, so getting getting close to the end on this. I did want to actually talk about one other thing too, uh, the, the blush on his cheeks right there. Uh, it just said to use real blush. So I haven't worn real blush on my face since probably the 90s. So I had to go out and buy some. And I wanted to get a really pink color. I probably should have just went to the dollar store because, um, you know, you don't really want to spend a whole lot of money on this, but I didn't. I went to Walgreens and I ended up paying probably about three, a little over three dollars, but I found this really pink one, Wet n Wild. And what is the name of this one? This color is called Pinch Me Pink. And so, yes, bought that. And uh, this will probably last me and definitely until the end of my lifetime because you don't use much. And I just played around with it a little bit because. I'll just kind of show you, you know, I recommend before you do it to kind of do it on a scratch, a scrap piece because, you know, it, it, it can be pretty, you can make it as dark as you like, but see there's like really pink. And then I think what I ended up doing is just kind of, you know, dabbing it on a piece of um, scrap felt first to get it kind of the shade I like because I, I didn't want him to be too pink but that's obviously a personal preference and yeah he's just bare it's just barely pink it actually looks a little pinker in real life than here I don't know I may go back and give him a little bit more rosy cheek it looks like some has rubbed off uh if I were to do it again I probably would have saved that till the very end but yeah I think I might uh do a little more pink on that cheek again it is, this light is just a little off because it is a little bit pinker in real life. Uh, I think that's all I have to talk about with this. I'm going to work on hopefully getting it finished this weekend. Maybe not the lining, but I have to say, I got a new kit in the mail yesterday. <laughs> this one is called Snack Food. And Mary Stockings was running a promotion, uh, a cyber, they were doing Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend special. And I went ahead and grabbed this one. And I was hoping because they said that they were going to randomly be putting one of next year's collectible ornaments, which uh, if you're watching this later on in the future, this is December of 2022. So for the, for the 2023 collectibles, they're going to do a panda series, monthly series. And they said if you ordered something from them over Black Friday, Cyber Monday, that you would potentially get a free panda ornament in your order because they were going to randomly put them in. But sadly, I didn't get one. So I'm going to have to just buy it by the first pan. I think I will do the panda series. Let me go get their catalog and I'll, I will show you really quick how cute he is. Just in case uh, you want to partake in next year's Merry Collectibles, I'll go get it. All right, let me move this out of the way. And this is their 2023 catalog. And that is what uh, one of the pandas look like. I think that's not the January one. I think in the January one, he's holding a wreath. But uh, this little panda is going to be um, celebrating all of the different months in 2023. So last year it was a bear, this year it's a pan. I didn't buy any of the bear collectibles from last year, but I don't think I'm going to be able to resist that cute panda. Um, but yes, I did not get the first one, and I think these are going to be going uh, on sale probably in, starting in January. And that is at marystockings.com if you haven't heard about them. Um, and they have a rewards program, 
and they've got this amazing catalog of all of these different Bucilla kits and then they also have some Mary stocking kits and then here's another exciting thing so the mantle series that I talked about uh, did I talk about I think I talked about that in a previous video uh, the, in 2023 they're going to have um, the the mantle series is going to be this train so this year so I don't really know how the mantle series if it's just kind of an add-on like you just keep adding on to the mantle let me find their mantle series that I bought oh yeah okay this one right here so um, yeah it's a mantle series classic Christmas village so I did I, I know that I'm going to get this one for Christmas. It's it's my Christmas present, and I already know that. It's already it has already been obtained, but it's not within my reach. So I'm going to have to wait till Christmas for that. But this is the mantle series, new. I don't know if it's a limited edition or what, but anyway, I went and bought it, and then yeah. So then, uh, like I said, I don't really know. It's a new series, so I don't know if they're going to have just um, you know additional parts to it every year I don't know but anyway I like that train and I'll probably be needing to get it as well <laughs> oh and there was another there was a wreath I wanted I should just do a flip through of this magazine let me find where the I think the wreaths are at the end here It was a Valentine wreath, I know that. And I think I'm probably gonna end up getting it. Oh gosh, I can't find where the wreath is. Hmm. Well, that's their Halloween. Maybe it's in the what's new. Well, trust me, there is a Valentine wreath that's full of hearts. And I just can't seem to find it at the moment. Let me put you on pause and find it. There it is, right there. Love is in the air wreath, it's called. So that's gonna be cute. Okay, oh, I didn't notice this. They have a Colorado flag. Oh, I might have to get that too. Isn't that cute? Of course, obviously, because I live in Colorado. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm, and it looks like it's lots of sequins. That's cute. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, it is Saturday. Did I mention it was Saturday? Yes, I think I did. Saturday, December 3rd, and my Christmas tree is up. It does not have ornaments on it yet, but it's got it's up and it's got lights and uh, I'm going to work on some stitching and go enjoy my coffee as it's cold now. So I'm going to have to go get myself a fresh warm cup of coffee because I don't like cold coffee. Okay, I like iced coffee, but I don't like lukewarm room temperature coffee. Okay, <laughs> and now I'm starting to ramble. So I will see you soon, hopefully with a finished stocking. Happy Saturday. Well, good morning. It is Saturday, December 10th, and I am finally here and super excited to be able to show you my finished stocking, lining and all. Without further ado, let's flip this guy over and behold the beauty. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. It is so cute. Let's just zoom in here. At all. Well, let's start at the top and zoom in. And here is my name tag. We'll first talk about this. I did not use the font that came with the kit. I just decided that after I wrote his name, uh, I just didn't like the way it looked in the cursive writing. So I went ahead and just wrote his name with my own handwriting. And I did a split stitch. To stitch that on. Um, I attached it by this whole side right here just to make sure that it's, oh, I guess I didn't do the whole side. I think I just went across the top and then down a little so it's kind of hanging but I didn't want it to come in front of the spoon. 
All right, I think I made another detail. I went back and stitched all the way through all the layers to give this a little bit of a quilted look. And there's another up close of its cute little face, rosy cheeks. Um, this, I think I stuffed a little too much, but um, I'm going to leave it because it's cute. And that's a uh, personal preference anyway. Uh, I think I fixed this gumdrop so it wasn't hanging a little off to the side quite as much as it was. And yeah, I think I had talked about everything else about this uh, on this whole area down here, so I won't go over that all again. Um, so what I had left to do from the last time was the stitching the back on. So you can see I just did kind of a tiny little stitches all the way around there to get that going. That's how that looks. Um, and then I was so excited so I had to go to the, the store. Oh yeah, I was going to tell you too. For some odd reason, my tab that they gave me is seems a little short. I mean, Compared to the ones that I see when I look at people, uh, their videos online, it seems like this tab is a little bit longer. I don't know why mine's so short because I only attached it underneath by, you know, about just a kind of a quarter, barely a quarter of an inch here. So I don't know why it's such a short tab, but I'm so excited to show the lining fabric that I found. It's glittery gingerbread fabric can't even see the sparkle but trust me it has a bit of glitter you can kind of see it can you see it on his face there the glitter so I went to the fabric store and I was hoping to find some fabric that had candy on it and you know more colorful sort of candy gingerbread fabric and I didn't find any but then hold on let me put you on the tripod okay and now I have both hands I could use here so there, you can see the glitter on that lining fabric there. So yes, when I went to the fabric store to get some fabric, I was hoping to get some really colorful sort of candy cross stitch, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, lining fabric. And it was pretty slim pickings, but I remembered that the majority of this stocking had uh, brown in the background. You know, it has the brown up top here and you know the table is all brown so I kind of thought when I saw that gingerbread fabric that it was brown I thought that it was perfect and I think that it is perfect so uh, while I was at it I'm also really excited because um, so yes here's my extra fabric I went ahead and just got a half a yard of that which was plenty to do the lining because you only need a fat quarter um, while I was at it, I found this fabric as well, which is going to go perfect for my other son's stocking uh, that I'm getting ready to do next. And I didn't have any of my stockings with me, so I kind of just sight unseen remembered that his has more of a green in the background. Let me go grab it. So, um, see, his stocking is going to have a lot of green right here. So I thought that this would go perfect with it. And it also has glitter. So yes, oops, let me get in a frame here. So yes, that's going to go perfect with that one, don't you think? Okay, and then I knew that I had those other stockings too, so uh, I know that I bought some, um, these little fat quarter bundles that were on sale. And I thought this one is so cute. It's got glitter and it has these vintage Christmas ornaments, which I might use that for my vintage lady stocking. And these were all just kind of came together. So I think any of these really would work. So they're all adorable. This is so cute. And I even love this one too with the little, that actually, would have looked pretty cute with this too in the background. Um, and then there's this Santa fabric and this adorable fox. 
like I said, these are all coordinating fat bundles, fat quarter bundles. And then of course you can always use red. They had a lot of different red Christmas fabric and I think in a pinch that would work really for any stocking, probably because they, they're all gonna have red in it. Okay, I think that is all I have to say about this. Um, as far as changes that I've made, I really didn't have any major issues or problems with anything. I mean, I was kind of learning as I went along with this being my first stocking, so I think that the next one will go even much more smoother than this one. Um, I would say the biggest problem that I have is just really trying to analyze how much stuffing I should use. I err on the side always of too much stuffing, so I think I'm going to really try to hold back. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this, this guy's a little fat right there, but you know, I think if I were to do anything, I would just go in and maybe not have made that quite as puffy, but um, everything else I think I'm just really happy with really excited and I think even if, if I really wanted to oh, let me get in frame. if I really wanted to I could even go back and make this tab a little bit longer um, but I think I'll wait and see when I do my other stockings and if this one is just quite a bit shorter than the rest of them then I'm gonna redo it but I think it's good for now Okay, thank you so much for watching. I am going to get this uploaded so that you can enjoy it. And I am going to go dive into stocking number two. All right, bye for now.